heritage so we can have the Nigeria of our dreams where there will be light at all times. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Nigerians, we are our brother's keepers. Let us rise up together to say no to fear and intimidation. This is our patriotic duty. The fight against insurgency cannot be won by guns and bullets alone, but by a total and complete reorientation of the minds of the Nigerian people. It is also a battle of the minds. To defeat the enemy, we must eradicate the message of hate, fear, discouragement and doubt. It's time to embrace a new message. The message of love, hope, courage and belief. Believe in ourselves. Believe in our people. Believe in our country. Believe in our government. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA. Do the right thing. Oh, oh. See, I did one corrupt business for town. Oh, I don't go. Which business be that now? Sure, you shall be a girl of it. Yeah. In, don't tell me, say, I think John are for kidnapping business. Eh? You want your kidnapping business? Hey, boys! Can you get Talk, 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 talk! What's in the app? I'm gonna say you come. I don't go see. You want your kidnapping business, so? Eh? You want to delete your life? John Ogaro be kidnapping business. Don't need forget that thing. I don't join them, finish. You better follow me. Or... Oh, for me. You do your own. When I never hear, say, police don't bab Ogaro be for where they go kidnap one bad man. I'm hide profit motives. This is News Extra with me, Aisha Bello Mustafa. Thank you for joining us. Nigeria has renewed its commitment to sustain its status as a polio-free nation. President Muhammadu Buhari, while receiving a delegation of donors and philanthropists, says it would be a thing of joy to see that generation after generation of Nigerians never know or experience polio. State House correspondent GD Onifadi tells us more. This signing of the updated Abuja commitment on the eradication of polio by President Muhammad Buhari will further spur Nigeria into work to the president and his predecessors ensuring that the removal of the polio endemic has been a matter of utmost priority. The list in the country from the list of polio invested nations, according to the president, is an easy task, but which requires hard work and commitment. Being referred to as a polio-free country is a success that must not be understated, he says. It clearly shows that through sheer commitment, hard work, and having the right partnership, we can succeed. The president is being encouraged by the progress the nation is making on the immunization front. He listed a long list of donors, which include the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and other local and international contributors to the success. I will take this opportunity to call on all state governors, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Then the whole Africa is free from polio. We are actually the only ones left. You have fought polio for more than two decades. You are this close. I have every confidence you will do it. And I will certainly be here to celebrate with you when the country is declared polio free. The finishing line is 2017 when the final pronouncement would be made by the World Health Organization, Jide Onifade, NT News. Telecommunication companies operating in Nigeria have been warned that phone users are properly registered for security reasons. Of course, that's why MTM is in trouble in Nigeria. All they want is to make money. They didn't mind about the security of the country. The president who promised to pursue vigorously the anti-corruption crusade said everything will also be done to stop acts of sabotage in the nation's oil industry. The oil thieves and the abductors will organize and deal with them. Casualties are coming from those who are lose trust. And that exercise will continue as long as we continue to uncover people who abuse trust. The president appealed for more patience and understanding from Nigerians as the government strives towards safeguarding the economy and addressing other critical issues for national development. We will continue to do our best, and our best, I hope, will be good enough. 
As the President explained, our problem is the oil price, as you know, has dropped, which means our oil revenues, our dollar revenues dropped. Let's look inwards. Let's not import what we can produce locally. And I think that's a very good objective for any economy. That we are working on a power mix for the country. And uh, the urgent need is to expand more renewable energy to Nigerians and create a significant number of jobs. Others describe the budget proposal as what will revive the economy and address problems of unemployment. This will allow for a substitution of our imports and will allow for exports. The budget seeks to stimulate the economy, for example, through economic diversification. I suggest that this House, this Senate, so together with the executive, should take a second look at this budget and peg, uh, and peg the benchmark at a more realistic value of perhaps between $20 and $25. Almost each and every senatorial district here is be faced with crisis of infrastructure. And I believe with a budget of over $400 billion given to power, works and housing, this issue would be well addressed. There are, however, divergent views, especially from the opposition party senators, which led to arguments for and against the budget estimate. So, it is a budget of change. I agree. It is the change in the wrong direction. Indeed, we have to fund part of this budget by borrowing because in the previous administration a huge chunk of our common patrimony, our resources have been stolen. Yes. Yes. This budget is for the 160 million Nigerians and so we need to put aside our political differences, our political persuasions and begin to see this budget as statesmen and women which we are. Debate on the 2016 appropriation bill continues on Thursday and it will span to Tuesday next week where Senator will contribute according to the days they have indicated interest earlier on. Earlier, Senator Emmanuel Bacher, in a point of order, raised an alarm of massive movement of some people suspected to be terrorists from some visa poorest to Taraba State. For budget implementation, make sure we pass a budget that we might have up to 75 to 80 percent um, implementation of the budget. I'm very much bothered when I look at the recurrent expenditure as it looks also doubling, and I begin to wonder how are we going to do this economic magic? The fundamental assumptions of this budget is becoming uh, very worrisome to us in the sense that the focus on crude oil production per day is the price of oil is coming down. Tomorrow, posterity will say that this dispensation succeeded or failed. Irrespective of party differences, all of us will be judged based on how we approach this onerous national assignment. The House also reconsidered a bill on National Child Protection and Enforcement Agency, sponsored by Representative Benny Lar from Plateau State. So aware that the bill has been regazetted as HB 127 and read the first time on Thursday, 19 November 2015. The bill has been sent to the Committee of the Whole for consideration. The House observed the minute silence in honor of the late Olu Baden of Ibadan. The House passed 24 bills at first reading. This includes the Color Location Information Bill, the Examination of Practice Arts, and the Federal Republic of Nigeria Constitutional Alliteration Bill. The debates on the 2016 appropriation bill continues from the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. In another development, Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki has challenged the Public Complaints Commission to take its rightful place as the watchdog of the public service by maximally applying a statutory laws. He said this when the Chief Commissioner and other commissioners representing 36 states visited him at the National Assembly. 
Abdullahi Garba Bernokudu has the details. Which was the second of its kind since the proclamation of the Eighth Senate was to brief the Senate President on effort to reposition the Public Complaints Commission as it is directly being supervised by the National Assembly. The Senate President expressed satisfaction with the activities of the Commission in recent time and asked them to do more. Because truly you are really the watchdog of Nigerians in ensuring that the public service delivers for Nigerians. If you are performing, then Nigerians should be satisfied with the public service. The Chief Commissioner, Emmanuel Obile, says two departments for public and private sector investigations have been created. In another development, the Senate President has granted audience to a Nigerian musician known as Patrick Indemeka, popularly known as Patrick Renke. There's nothing as important as um, bridging gaps between our leaders and we the youth. It is our responsibility to get all that talent out. Those who are already doing well, get them to do better and do more. May place Nigeria at number one in anything that we can do it. And we, a lot of us are proud of what you guys are doing in the entertainment, music, in the, in the uh, film industry. You are really putting this country out there. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Garba Brunokudu, NTA News. In the meantime, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Justice Danladi Umar. The only way we can instate discipline in our people, that is the only way people can know that they can end up in this court. In 2015, 91 cases were tried by the CCT, 32 cases were disposed, and 335 cases pending or adjourned from various states and the FCT. From the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Grace Oyenubi, NTN News. The Supreme Court has affirmed the election of Tanko Umaru Al-Makura of the All Progressive Congress as the duly elected governor of Nasarao State. Aliu Tukur reports. Unanimous judgment delivered by the seven-member panel of the Supreme Court justices, the Apex Court holds that the appeal filed by the Abga candidate Labra Maku lacks merit, therefore dismissed the suit and pronounced the APC candidate as the governor-elect. We have 13 local government. It's not possible for a person that won a local government, which is Nasrallah Igo, to take over the first local government. It's not possible. I would want to extend my hands of friendship to all people that have contested against me. Now that the final decision has come, let them come. If they have any patriotic zeal in them to make Nasrawa state excel. Meanwhile, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafara, Namdikanu, has been arraigned before the federal high court by the DSS on a six-count charge bordering on treason, unlawful possession of firearms. The accused, however, pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Counsel Tukanu Chuks Muamwa filed bail application and also urged the court to remand the accused in a federal prison instead of DSS cell. Although prosecution counsel Mohammed Diri objected to that prayer, saying remanding the accused in prison could amount to security challenges as a result of the distance. The presiding judge, Justice John Soho, overruled that objection by ordering that Kanu be remanded in Kujay prison and also adjourned the case to January the 25th for hearing on the bail application. In another development, Justice Adeni Ademola of the Federal High Court has ordered that the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, must be brought to court for his trial. Dasuki's case, which was to commence Wednesday, was put on hold as a result of his non-appearance in court. Justice Ademola said Dasuki must appear in every stage of the trial since it is a criminal matter except in a case where the court makes an express order for the accused not to appear. Prosecution counsel Ola Dipo Okweshei withdrew the application he filed earlier for the court to set aside the bail granted to Dasuki and filed another application seeking for secret trial where only accredited journalists and lawyers should be allowed to cover the trial. This, he said, is in a bid to protect the prosecution witnesses. The case has been adjourned to February the 5th in Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Muhammad says Nigeria will explore every potential avenue to broaden its relationship with Cuba. He said this when he received in audience the Cuban ambassador to Nigeria, Carlos Sosa, in Abuja. Anthony Forson has the details. Nigeria and Cuba, Lai Muhammad said, 
have had a long-standing relationship and of particular interest is in the area of culture. We hope that uh, this will be the beginning of um, a mutually rewarding relationship, especially in the area of uh, culture. In the media do Still to come, securing the environment in areas affected by insurgency, the government commits itself to ensuring that the people pursue their legitimate engagements. Plus, the poetic city scattered among seven hills mourns its centenarian monarch. Join us again. Do you know the look of a suicide bomber? They're usually in loose or heavy clothing usually inappropriate for the weather. They carry bags or packages. They tighten their hands or keep them in their pockets. They are unaware of their surroundings, always alone and nervous. They'll be found driving cars, moving very fast or extremely slow. Be vigilant, be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. If you see something, say something. This message is brought to you by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. When no one gave him a chance, we were there. We were there when yellow led to I do. We were there when hope was restored and joy rekindled. When innovations empowered startups to become blue chips. And stand by their word. To do that, you need the best of the best. Physically, mentally. So it doesn't matter if it's creating opportunities or supporting economies. We know it's a tough job. But hey, somebody's got to do it. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. Enter a world of natural beauty, where world-class golfing luxury meets world-class facilities. Damak Properties presents hotel and residences at Akoya Oxygen. Golf-facing residences starting from $120,000 US dollars with payments over four years. Live an exclusive lifestyle set around an international golf course, offering stunning views throughout the day. Hotel and residences at Akoya Oxygen. Green is the new black. Damak, live the luxury. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. Welcome back. You're watching News Extra on the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. I am Aisha Bello Mustafa. Let's turn our attention to some security matters now. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ete Ibas, is advocating establishment of special courts to try suspects of pipeline vandalism to serve as a deterrent to others. This was in a paper delivered to the National Defense College Course 24. Defense correspondent Mohammed Abdul Qadir tells us more. The paper was on challenges and future of the Nigerian Navy. The chief of naval staff said the service has come of age in surveillance, interdiction, and apprehension capability, accounting for over 160 suspects arrested last year. 
He identified challenges limiting the military policing and diplomatic roles on the 420 nautical miles territorial waters and beyond to poor funding. Others are possible contention from overlap of the EEZ between countries of the Gulf of Guinea. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye has the details. Concurring with this idea, the chairman of the session, Senator Stella Udua, emphasized on the need for capacity development. You cannot give a man responsibility without equipping them to perform that responsibility. Lieutenant Colonel Randall Tono, in a paper titled Operational Procedures for a New Sergeant at Arms Service, opines that there is a need to develop personnel qualifications standards for general acceptance for specialized positions. On the dynamics of security in an increasingly technologically advanced world, former U.S. Marine Ed Bolland emphasized on moving beyond the human factor. If you look at today's physical security, it's become a large merger. It's a merger of biometrics, electronics, physical space, personalities, budget, and probably more important than anything else, the new tool, the new threat that the terrorist groups and organizations and criminal, <coughs> organized criminal activity that's going on around the world. And representative of the Director General State Security Service presented a paper on close protection of Hono. Dedicating this award to civil servants in the nation is to a greater extent a wake-up call for optimal performance. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The Federal Road Safety Corps has reiterated its commitment towards ensuring that road traffic accidents are reduced to 15% in 2016. To achieve this, the Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi says there is no going back on the April 1st deadline for the implementation of the speed limit device as directed by the Presidency in Abuja. Ali Tokur has the details. Addressing the media on 2015 end-of-year patrol and the prospects of the Corps in 2016, the Corps Marshal noted that most of the road traffic crashes recorded in 2015 were associated with over-speeding. To reduce this, he said, all commercial vehicles must install the speed limit device or have their vehicles impounded and the drivers prosecuted. He added that the Corps is committed to ensuring that the year 2016 is better than the previous ones. At the moment, he says the Corps is working towards improving its operations by training both its personnel and public drivers, as well as having a sustainable cooperation with stakeholders. Uh, we, we are committed towards creating safer road environment, ensuring the welfare of road users through improved service delivery. The, we've worked in 2015, and uh, we believe that uh, for 2016, our focus is on improved fleet operations and sustainable stakeholders consultation, collaboration with states on improved road safety administration, and improved enforcement and public education. The co marshal also promised to press for maximum compensation for the families of his officers and men who lost their lives or got injured in 2015. In Abuja, Ali Utuku, NTA News. The people of the ancient city of Ibadan and beyond have continued to mourn the Olubadan of Ibadan, Oba Samuel Odulano Odugade. The 101-year-old monarch passed on Tuesday. Oyeyinka Folaromi reports. The Monotone Palace of Olubado of Ibadan land, Obasame Odulano Odugade the first. The situation was calm when NTA News visited first son of the monarch. Professor Femi Lana said the royal families are awaiting the official announcement of the demise of the royal father by Oyo State Government. Among the early callers to sympathize with the royal family are members of the Olubadon Council, senior chiefs, religious leaders, members of Olubado of Ibadan land in Ibadan. Oyo Yenka Falarami, NCA News. Senate President Dr. Bukar, Abubakar Bukalasaraki has expressed sadness over the passing away of the Olubadon of Ibadan. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, the Senate President said the late Olubadon was a courageous and great monarch who fought to preserve the dignity of the Ibadan traditional tool and the nation's traditional institution. 
The Senate president commiserated with the immediate family of the late Olubadon, the nation's traditional institution, the government and people of Oyo State, and the entire nation over the loss and prayed God to grant the soul of the late monarch eternal rest. Similarly, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has expressed sadness over the passing on of the Olubado of Ibado. In a press statement by his special advisor on media and public affairs, the Speaker extended his condolences to the family of the late monarch, the people of Ibado and Oyo State. The Speaker prayed God to grant the late monarch eternal rest and his family the fortitude to bear the loss. Up ahead on News Extra, operators of the steel industry send SOS to the government. The details shortly. My people, now how does it serve a suicide bomber self? Suicide bomber they always knock heavy cloth or sometimes anyhow loose cloth when not delicate with the weather at all at all. They they always carry big bag or many load like who they travel. They they always tight hand like blow or even put their hand inside pocket like who called the mama. Hey, what? Sometimes eh, suicide bomber like to tanda alone, they fear fear. And they know they send waiting they happen around them all. Sometimes eh, then they drive motor fast, fiam fiam. And sometimes, now so they go, they drive slow, slow, they terrible. If you shadow any kind load with them drop, or messing with Kurukere Waka when not pure, I beg, me will report and give police or other security agent one time. The security of we country, eh, now everybody hand the deal. Nigeria, me will unite against terrorism. If you now see something, me will now say something. Now, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, bring up. Sunrise Hills is unlike anything you've ever seen before. A new way of life is dawning in the heart of Nigeria. We are back with more names and personalized messages on our bottles and cans. So now you can share a Coke and a feeling with family and friends. You get three kinds of moms. The paranoid mom. The cautious mom. And the Dettol mom. She only trusts Dettol antiseptic liquid to protect her family from up to 100 illness causing germs. And it's recommended for cuts and scrapes. Which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Introducing the new Dettol 55 gram soap with the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dettol 55 gram soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. Dangote salt now in a new pack. It's not just salt, it's Dangote salt. The new Big Crystal Original, now with more remarkably visible ink, a tinted support and a ballpoint that glides easily. Big Crystal Original, it makes the grade. Hello again, you're watching NTA News Extra. 
Operators of the nation's steel industry decry how low patronage of their finished products and ask the federal government to save the sector from imminent collapse. Amechi Payas has details in our business news segment. Hello and thanks for joining us on Business News. Nigeria's steel industry has evolved over the years, providing job opportunities for thousands of Nigerians and contributing to the nation's GDP. Investigations by NTA Business News, however, revealed that the sector is on the verge of collapse as operators grapple with a myriad of problems. There are about 30 steel industries in the country today. These companies produce iron rods, barbed wire, metal doors, alongside other products. The sector has capacity to create wealth and job opportunities in Nigeria. However, investigations revealed that manufacturers in the industry operate at between 15 to 20 percent capacity utilization. Access finance to kickstart and expand their businesses. The initiative is to de-emphasize the demand for fixed assets as collateral by banks. This was presented to some journalists at a workshop in Lagos. Abdullah Muhammad has the details. It's estimated to have over 30 million small-scale entrepreneurs. But if you ask the majority of this class of entrepreneurs what their most nagging challenge is, this is what they say. It has been a trend that has existed for so long. The banks are not SME friendly. For small-scale entrepreneurs like Alexander, access to finance for business expansion is like a wild goose chase. However, the introduction of a collateral registry and secured transaction system will change this scenario. When the system becomes operational, movable assets like vehicles, power generating sets, intellectual property, as well as other machineries will be considered as collateral. This, the International Finance Corporation and the Central Bank of Nigeria say, will open up access to finance and push down interest rates. This centralized database is being run by the Central Bank and this centralized database will be able to enable, to give notice to everyone. See that we're having a vibrant population, uh, people that are ready to uh, undertake most of the uh, adventures. Uh, Nigeria on is going to be a great success. With a commitment to improving the role of credit bureaus and a better identification system like the bank verification number registration exercise, loan repayments are guaranteed according to the IFC and the Apex Bank. Once this structure is in place, you will see that information will flow much faster. And the lenders, the credit providers, they have uh, source of information. The Central Bank of Nigeria has also developed a legal framework that will support the use of movable assets as collateral. In Lagos, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. The defense headquarters has condemned the unpatriotic attacks on the nation's economic lifeline in the Niger Delta, saying these attacks were carried out by some criminal elements who are bent on destroying the nation's strategic assets, which would no longer be tolerated. The defense headquarters warns these criminal elements to desist from these unwholesome acts of economic sabotage in the Niger Delta region for the overall benefit of the country. A statement by the acting director, Defense Information, Rabe Abubakar, warns that any individual or group of persons who engage in any act of sabotage to the nation's strategic assets will face the full weight of the law as the military and other security agencies will ensure total protection of such facilities wherever they are in line with their constitutional mandate. The security of the strategic assets and any other facilities, it says, is a collective responsibility of every patriotic and law-abiding citizen, especially the locals close to such val valuable infrastructure. The defense headquarters urges all to cooperate with the military and other security agencies and report suspected individuals or groups for prompt action. 
Now to the power sector. One of the critical points highlighted at the meeting of the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, and industry participants in the power sector is on the need to cover milestones on the new electricity tariff regime expected in less than two weeks. Hamza Musa Makarfi examines the issues as distribution companies gear up for massive meter rollout to customers for transparent transaction. From February 1, multi year tariff order MITO is the regulation for electricity prices in Nigeria. It is a recurring phenomenon as February 1st is another date for the electricity market to witness the new tariff. The tariff model, according to the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory... Tariffs have been used. What is the impact of past tariff on the activity of the power sector? Similarly, are Nigerians are unanimous on getting the value with Without, the expected increase. Uh, in Nigerians are willing to pay, but what are they paying for? What are they paying for? If you want to increase tariff, let them have better you know, treatment. If you are paying a high tariff and you are not getting the services you are paying for, I mean, we are human beings. And everybody knows the situation of the country right now. Things are not easy. Everybody are, people are struggling. Another concern is that for the new tariff to be fair and transparent, a massive rollout of meters is expected from the distribution companies. We have bought meters worth about four billion, which will uh, uh, start, you know, uh, distributing to our customers. Now, how the electricity market responds quickly to accessing consumers with meters is fundamental to the successful implementation of the new tariff regime. In Abuja, Hamza Musama Karipi. NTA News. Do stay with us here on News Extra. In the next segment, experts assure Nigerians that avian influenza or bird flu is being effectively tackled and showcasing the cultural heritage of Indibu. Join us again. Do you know the look of a suicide bomber? They're usually in loose or heavy clothing usually inappropriate for the weather. They carry bags or packages. They tighten their hands or keep them in their pockets. They are unaware of their surroundings, always alone and nervous. They'll be found driving cars, moving very fast or extremely slow. Be vigilant, be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. If you see something, say something. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You get three kinds of moms. The paranoid mom. The cautious mom. And the debtor mom. She only trusts Dettol antiseptic liquid to protect her family from up to 100 illness-causing germs. And it's recommended for cuts and scrapes, which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Introducing the new Dettol 55 Gram Soap. With the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dettol 55 gram soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. Hello! Would you like some water? It's cold, especially for you. Which era are you living in? We have a fridge. When everything else in your house is from the present, then why are your toilet cleaning methods from the past? Hapik, all in one for you. Compared to other toilet cleaners, Hapik removes top stains, kills all germs, and removes bad odors. She only trusts Dettol to protect her family from up to 100 illness causing germs, which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Dettol, be 100% sure. Introducing the new Dettol 55 gram soap with the same germ protection and
at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dettol 55 gram soap for 80 naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching News Extra. In its effort to become a top-notch university in Africa in the next four years, Bayes University Abuja has secured approval from the National Universities Commission to run engineering program in addition to the existing ones. Pro-Chancellor of the university, Senator Yusuf Detti Baba Ahmed, made this known at the university's media briefing after its 16th Board of Trustees meeting, which x-rayed the extent of physical development of the university. Abdullahi Musa Suleja has the details. Academic and sports space private university was established five years ago. The engineering programs approved are in electrical, mechanical and petrochemical, among others. The institution has four faculties, namely Applied Science and Computing, Law, Social and Management Science and Engineering, with 250 academic staff strength and 1,400 students. The university has so far held two convocation ceremonies. The Pro-Chancellor, Senator Yusuf Dettu Baba Ahmed, said the construction of faculties of environmental science is almost completed, while that of medical and pharmaceutical sciences is in progress. He said the university has upgraded its teaching facilities and equipment, phased out all projectors and replaced by smart boards in the classrooms while new laboratories are being fitted. A total of 35 new academic appointments have been issued uh, in the last one week, 20 of which are professors and uh, PhD holders, and a total of 11 new promotions have been made. We also submitted applications for approval to commence environmental science programs, medical and pharmaceutical science programs, and also awaiting approval for, from the NUC regarding postgraduate programs. In recognition of their unanimous contribution to the educational development in Nigeria and service to humanity, the Chancellor Professor Michael Hood and the Pro-Chancellor Senator Yusuf Dette Baba Ahmed were presented with award by the National Youth Assembly of Nigeria. Congratulations, sir. To correct the impression that the school is not meant for only the students of the highly placed in the society, the Pro-Chancellor said far from that because the school offers scholarship to 60 students out of 1,000. In Abuja, Abdullahi Musa Suleja, NTA News. Moving on to health matters now, four northern states, Kaduna, Barno, Sapkoto and Yobe, have teamed up with Kano and Bauchi states to sign a memorandum of understanding with Bill and Belinda Gates and Dangote Foundation to end the scourge of polio and vaccine-preventable diseases in their states. Muhammad Lawal Baba has the details. Uh, Muhammad Lawal Baba, NTA News. In the meantime, experts on livestock have assured Nigerians of interventions to tackle the resurgence of the avian influenza, popularly called bird flu, but stressed the need for constant surveillance to stem the outbreak. Talato Ezurike reports that this was contained in discussions on NTA's current affairs program, Tuesday Live. Experts say the outbreak or resurgence of avian influenza popularly called bird flu, can occur in any part of the world as the disease is associated with wide migratory birds and its impact is devastating. There is therefore apprehension over the resurgence of bird flu in 18 states in Nigeria, including Anambra, Oyo, Kano, and the Federal Capital Territory, resulting in depopulation of more than 2 million birds to check the spread. We have not been able to do some of the containment activities. One of these is active surveillance. You cannot just keep poultry today, anyhow, because if you look at the investment by the big operators, it runs into billions of naira. On the other hand, we are not discouraging small-scale operations, but they must be done with the confines of standards. You also have weak and ineffective veterinary infrastructure, and I mean, even if you look at the personnel, the personnel are inadequate. 
Another area of concern, many say, is getting the right policies in place and lack of commitment to poultry farming in the agricultural sector. We're the number one producer of eggs in Africa. We're the number four, number five producer of chicken. But we can lead this continent in both chicken and eggs. But the government needs to be prepared to sit with those that are involved in the business and make real things happen. We also need to ensure that farmers get compensated. What is important is that you prepare for when there is going to be an introduction of the virus by these wild birds and contain the disease in the primary area where there has been an introduction so it does not spread beyond that. Analysts advise that bird flu is currently a low-risk health threat and stress that Nigeria remains a reference point in tackling the disease like it did in 2008. Talati Ezeweke, NTA News. The spread of the disease across, uh, across the country, now that uh, phenomenon is changing, that we have some other facilities that can diagnose. A situation where we had to transport someone from Ondo to Irua, from rivers to Irua, is unacceptable. Six hours of travel on a bad road in a bad vehicle is unacceptable. So we should be able to treat people around. Let me also say clearly that it's also erroneous to give the impression that there is a special treatment facility in Irua. We have special treatment facilities all over the country. And we have people all over the country that can manage Lhasa. Apart from the existing six centers located in Lagos, Ibadan, Port Harcourt, Kado, Meduguri, Irua, and Abuja, the Minister of Health announced an increase in the number of such Lhasa diagnostic centers to 14. The eight additional ones are to be located in the Lhasa fever hotspots comprising Ebonyi, Niger, Bochi, Nasarawa, Plateau, Ondo, and Taraba. In Abuja, Wabi Abdullah, NTA News. It was a cultural extravaganza as well as a big time exhibition of the cultural heritage of Indibu as the people of Upo, the clan head of Dunukofia people in Anambra state, celebrated the 24th edition of the Ofala Festival of Eze Upo Dunukofia. Igwe Robert Eze. Here is Charles Ibuamalu. Yeah, Charles Ibuamalu, NTN News. We've got a bit on the world scene coming up and sports. Do stay with us. National Teachers Institute, we're a great teacher trainer. The National Teachers Institute invites the general public to the official commissioning of its e-learning center, Smase Integrated Science Lab, NTI Fire Service, NTI Smase Multipurpose Hall, NTI Computer Laboratory, NTI Convocation Square, NTI Official Logo, and distribution of operational vehicles to state offices to be conducted by Dr. Aminu Ladenshi. DG and Chief Executive NTI, Special Guest Professor Vincent Ado Tenebe, VC, National Open University of Nigeria. Date Thursday, 20th January 2016. Time 2 p.m. Prompt. Venue NTI Headquarters, Kaduna Zaria Expressway, Riga Chukun Kaduna. Alwayses, alwayses. We have lived together as brothers and sisters since long time in Muriva, without no mind that we have spoken different languages and celebration our cultural and diversity. No bombing, no courtism, no kidnapping. Nowadays our children are trampoline to courtes. Today we are suspicion one another. All this notorious behavior have scattered all over Nigeria. When are you going to change? Mbo, when are you going to stop? Terrorism and unwanted visitors. Kidnapping. Welcome back. You're watching News Extra on the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Dambazo, says ensuring peace and integration of people in areas affected by insurgency is key in making the environment secure for the people. He said this in Yola while on a tour. Yusuf Jika has the details. 
The minister, accompanied by the Chairman House Committee on Interior, Inspector General of Police, Comptrollers General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, Nigeria Prison Service, and the Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, were at the Malkoi IDP camp, where he assured the displaced persons that the Northeast is now in a safe zone, and concerted efforts are being put in place to enable people return to their homes and continue their normal life. The minister, who expressed concern over the well-being and welfare of the IDPs, donated 25 sewing machines to enhance entrepreneurial skills acquisition program at the camp and thanks them to remain focused and determined contributing their quota to nation building. It will require the settlement, the settlement of internally displaced persons. It will require reconciliation, reconciliation among and between communities. At Yola Prison and the newly constructed Yola Party Prison in Adamao State, General Dambazao directed the controller to ensure speedy deployment of medical personnel and equip the prisons with modern facilities to enable the inmates live dignified lives. The security assessment tour also took the team to Governor Muhammad Umar Jibrila and Lamido Adamao, Dr. Muhammad Barkindo Aliu Mustafa, were the minister of some officials. This was triggered by the death of a graduate who electrocuted himself after his job application was dismissed by local authorities. In the United States, Sarah Paulin, former governor of Alaska and Republican vice presidential candidate, has lent her support for Donald Trump, a Republican presidential hopeful. And security forces in Pakistan have ended a gun and bomb battle on a university in northwestern Pakistan. 19 people, including four suspects, were killed, while 17 others were injured. The Prime Minister said the country is out to tackle terrorism. That's Global Tidbits, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. Rugby Federation of Nigeria cries out for support as Roja Federer is on the verge of winning another Grand Slam at the Australian Open. Details with Amanzi Marcus on Sports Update. The Nigerian Rugby Federation is appealing to the three tiers of government to provide a conducive atmosphere and facilities for the growth and development of the game in the country. President of the Federation, Edward Palm, who made the appeal, is however optimistic of brighter days ahead following Nigeria's promotion from number 11 to 8 in African rugby. Unfortunately, government's awareness is, uh, I would say, three over ten where the sport is concerned. We are preparing to play our African Cup 1C again this year. I hear it's going to be...